What is up, all you beautiful people? Welcome back to the Successful Stylist Academy podcast. I am your host, Ambrosia Carey. I have a huge announcement to make. And as promised, we are doing a SS Pack giveaway to all of you amazing reviewers who've been giving us awesome five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. So without further delay, drum roll, please. Congratulations goes to Jade1717, and I'm so sorry, but I do not have your Instagram handle, so we will try to figure that out in the meantime, but hopefully you hear this on the podcast. Make sure you DM us on Successful Stylist Academy on Instagram and let us know your deets so that way we can send you off your amazing support pack and you get a one-on-one session with yours truly. I'm going to be covering some marketing strategies specifically for your business after we go through a discovery call and we talk about some things that you want to get rocking and rolling in your business. That is the name of this game and I'm really excited to work hands-on with you. But that said, keep those reviews rolling through because we are going to do more of these giveaways in the future and we will be selecting at random just to keep this as fair as possible. And we really appreciate your five-star review. It means the world to us to hear from you, but also it helps the right people find us as well. So let's move on to our topic today because this is something that's going to help all of our businesses moving into the future. And this is almost something that is non-negotiable today. I'm going to be talking to you about the best AI tools for salon owners and independent hairstylists. But more importantly, we're going to be talking about how to use AI to improve our business in general. So I'm going to run through a couple of things that I have already been implementing within my business that I found great success with. And I'm going to be talking to you about some of the newer devices or newer items that most salon owners are using and finding great success with. So I'm going to be kicking this number off with you guys, starting out with email marketing. Email marketing can be really complex, but it also can be very simple at the same time. That's the fun part about it. And just going into email marketing, I think I want to preface by saying the reason why email marketing has been so successful is because it's a great place to set up your workflows. So what that means is that you can set up rules that will be automatically triggered by emails based on certain actions. You can also personalize your emails in most tools today. Now I use Flowdesk for my automation. I just prefer the verbiage. It's nice and clean and simple. I love the templates that it offers to me. I can make repeats. I see my stats automatically and it also sends me some interesting facts if I wanna know about those. Um, It's very clean for me to read things and the analytics are not that complicated and I'll talk to you guys about that in just a second. So there are a few reasons why email marketing is so important. Uh, Let's just run over the basics. Number one, you want to increase engagement with your audience always. AI can help you personalize your emails and send them out to the right people at the right time. And it can also lead to increased engagement over time. So if you're not already setting that up, there are ways of having people go through a funnel and then they can opt in or opt out of things. That way, they are only receiving information that they are interested in. The other thing is that it improves conversions. AI can help you target your emails to the right people, which can lead to improved conversions, which is also important because if you're trying to sell a product online or you're trying to sell service that might be coming in to fall or might be something really excessive in the winter time and you wanna make sure that people are booking that, that's a really great way to set up that automation workflow. Speaking of automation workflows, AI can help you automate your email marketing workflows so you can save time and money on that end too. Now, I love a good automated workflow and I will revisit those emails from time to time to make sure that all that information is updated. The rule for me is I typically like to have three to four warming emails before you end up trying to sell a service. So for you, as a hairstylist, salon owner, independent, solopreneur, I think it's really important that you actually warm up your audience by giving them some tips on how to take care of their hair, some uh, practical things that they can do at home in the meantime, and maybe even just pieces of advice on how they can achieve certain looks that they're looking for without um, breaking the bank or you know something that they can do to tidy up in the meantime instead of doing the full service. So giving options like that. And then the last or the fourth email, I should say, would be something that would be triggering or converting somebody to actually book that 
appointment. With that said, I will definitely include a 50% off your flow desk. If you want to give that a try, you can get 50% off for an entire year. Totally worth trying it out to see if you like it. All right, let's move into the next portion of AI tools. And this is also something that is kind of set on automatic with some social media tools, but it's also something that can really help you with making the user experience more accessible on your website. And that is to have chat bots helping you. One is chat fuel, many chat. You probably know about that one if you're using Facebook and drift three of these sources. They do have free options in the beginning. And then when you have higher subscriber count, then they do start to charge you. But these platforms allow your business to create chat bots that can answer FAQs or book appointments or even sell products for you. So this is a really great way for you to kind of set it up in the beginning and then take your hands off and just check your analytics from time to time to tweak anything and let the chat bot do its work. Especially for those of you salon owners who are also working behind the chair like so many of us are, this is a really great way to have that kind of hand-holding service on the back end to help you with some of the things that you're not able to do Or maybe you just don't have the energy to do when you're off of work and you want to spend time doing something else. Now I'm going to move into kind of some of the heavier portion of AI, which is Google Analytics. Now this has been around for a long time and Google Analytics can be a little overwhelming. So I'm going to try to take out some of that overwhelm by telling you what I think you should focus on as a salon owner. Um, I would say going to your Google Analytics account, click on your reports tab, and then you can select a report that you wanna summarize. When you click on that summary tab, then you can look over that report and have it displayed, and you can even take that information and plug it into other AI source tools, which I'll tell you about in a second. But just in general, if you just wanna look over a stylized summary that is going to give you some breakdown of things, I would say looking at your traffic by source, such as organic search, social media or direct traffic. Like I would definitely be searching for traffic initially. That's a really great guideline to start with. And then you can keep tracking your measurements after that. And I would say just do this on a monthly basis, Um, especially for a website usage for a salon owner. You know, you're working on a brick and mortar. Like one of the best services that you can offer is some of that in-person, that final touch, you know, just the rapport and building up that clientele. So I would say that's going to be your bread and butter. And I would also say that your website, you shouldn't sleep on it. I think the website, it's important to know where that traffic is coming from. That way you know where to place your marketing efforts. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about that. So conversion rate is an important metric to track because you can see how many visitors are coming to your website and it's helping them make a decision on purchasing or signing up for a newsletter. And that's important for you to see because you want to know who is attracted to what and what's doing well and what can you tweak. The second thing I would say is your bounce rate. Bounce rate is going to tell you the metrics that track the percentage of visitors who leave your website. So you can see if they've only gone to one page, for instance, and if you have a high bounce rate, that can indicate if your website is not meeting the needs of the visitors. So maybe there's a verbiage thing. Maybe there's too many photos. Maybe there are broken links on there. Maybe it's confusing and there's too much information. So that's a way that you can kind of tighten up that particular page to see if it's going to help you with lowering your bounce rate. The next part is your session duration. So that's going to help you understand too how long somebody's actually spending on your website. So the longer the session, that can indicate that visitors are engaged with your content. So if you have a blog post on there, for instance, that's the reason why having a blog on your website can be helpful because it helps visitors stay on your website a little bit longer. And let's just go over one more. One more thing that is important, not just for your website, but I would say just everything today by today's standards. I would say keywords are going to be one of the most important things for you to focus on. I have some useful resources for you for keywords that will helpfully help you take some of that overwhelm away. But this metric, it helps you track the keywords that people are finding on your website. So that's important because that helps you straighten up your search engine. And this also is important information for you to optimize your website in the future. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, um, I know that was a lot to chew on, but I am going to simplify all that stuff into three larger buckets. 
So the first half of that was just all about some of the metrics and some of the analytics that you may want to kind of pay attention to as you're building this stuff out. Because when you set those goals ahead of time, then you'll have a metric that you can actually track and see how you're doing. So that way you know what you want to work toward in the future. That would go for anything, right? It can be for social media, it could be for your website, it could be for your business. But regardless, like I want you to find like very specific goals and key measurable metrics to track so that way you know where you are and then you know where you want to head from there. And so the three viable sources that you can actually turn to to help you with this and streamline this process is ChatGPT, Bard, which is owned by Google, and Meta just launched something called Llama2. Stay with me here for a second, please. <laughs> Hold, please. So first, let's talk about ChatGPT, which is the most widely talked about uh, platform right now. It is an open source model. And it does have a free version. There is a paid version that is now $20 a month. It's like $19.99. And that's for ChatGPT4. Uh, right now, when you are inputting things into ChatGPT, it starts to learn your voice, your verbiage, what you prefer. You can teach it to have a voice similar to yours. The more that you work with ChatGPT, the more ChatGPT can do for you. But there's other things that ChatGPT can do for you as well. Uh, for instance, if you have copy on your website and you're like, hmm, I'm looking at the metrics here and it looks like it's not doing so good. So if you actually take your paragraphs, one paragraph at a time and input it into ChatGPT and just say, help me create verbiage that will convert higher SEO and then boom, Put that in there and it will spit out some ideas on different ways that you can actually word things so you have stronger keywords. Now, I want to disclose this part. ChatGPT is not intelligent enough in order to give you current strong keywords. It's going off of history and it's going off of metrics that are a little bit older. So I would still do diligence and actually input some of the words into Google and see what the search rate is on that if you want to have higher clicked through keywords. Um, if this is something that's overwhelming for you, I would say this. Start out with the website that you already have. Take one paragraph at a time, copy and paste the paragraph into ChatGPT, and ask it to reword it for you as a salon owner who was talking to a client who has never seen our space before and is looking for a stylist to take care of her blonding service, something like that. So whenever you create a scenario for ChatGPT, it's able to actually use a voice that's gonna be similar to yours. And if it doesn't, then you could say, throw a little bit more humor in there, um, make it more personable, make it shorter, things like that. So you can give it a list of commands and we'll actually start to adapt to what you're wanting. Okay, so ChatGPT in a nutshell is like an assistant in your back pocket basically. So it can do all of the laundry list of things that you have to do on the back end where you just have a brain fart, you know, like you just can't think to yourself, I need help with the verbiage of this, or I need copy for this. And it will spit out something that it thinks that you would need for your personality. As a matter of fact, they just actually released something new where you can input your information and you can teach ChatGPT how to speak like you. And the more it gets to know you, the more it actually can start to generate some content that is going to sound like your voice. So that's the trippy part about it, but also the amazing part about how it can help you. Moving into Bard. Bard is something I've been playing around with for over a month now, and I have to say I'm a true addict. I think Bard is superior to ChatGPT at this moment. Yes, I have boldly said that because it gives you a list of examples and it even gives you options. So if I want a list of examples for Pinterest pins that I would be posting Monday through Friday, and my main goal is to sell products. And I'm going to say, I want to sell these three products by the end of August. Help me come up with a list of pins that I can create. 
it will give me ideas and also give me examples of previous pins that have actually done well. I also am able to drop my entire website into Bard and ask Bard to tell me, what is this website about? Who is it attracting? And what is the best page that people are finding useful? And Bard will give me a list of information. I can drop uh, my Instagram handle in there and say, what is my Instagram handle or what is this Instagram handle showing you and who is attracted to this page? And then it will give you a list of the things that it thinks based on what it sees, what people are actually drawn to. It is wild, my friend. I just want you to play around with it. And if you play around with it, please just send me a DM on Successful Stylist Academy or Ambrosia Carey and tell me that it was worth it. Tell me you did it. Tell me it's helped your business in some form or another. Um, I just want to make sure that this is information I'm passing on to you and it's making things easier for you. That's my ultimate goal. Okay, now for the last part. This is something that is even so big that I can't personally wrap my mind around. I would even boldly say that it's the largest open source model to date. It's called Llama 2. Llama 2 is run by Meta, which Meta we see on Facebook, right? Meta partnered with Microsoft and they are launching the largest open source model out there. So Llama 2 is supposed to be able to not just give you full blog posts and write up a lot of other things, but it also it has advanced things in there too, like tracking tools and being able to help you literally write up, like create a website. Like I don't, I almost can't even wrap my mind around it. I don't, I don't even know if that's even the full truth. This is just the evidence that's come forward as I've been researching and reading more about it. Um, but again, I would start out, start out with ChatGPT and then move into Bard, try both of them out. Sometimes I'll go back and forth with a Q&A just to see what answer I'm getting that I like better. And then I'll use that moving forward. I would also say, word to the wise, I would never copy and paste things that I'm getting from Bard or from ChatGPT and just use that by itself. I think it's really important to look into it and add your extra words or take away things that don't sound like you and still make it you because I have seen verbiage before that I feel like, okay, that feels a little robotic and it does feel stiff and it definitely was written by an AI tool. Keep in mind that these generative AI tools are still very new in our industry and not just in our industry, they're still very new in general. So I would just use it as an assistant. Don't let it replace you and your words. Okay, so in a nutshell, I'm going to just wrap this up in one pretty little bow for you. Um, let's go back to email marketing, just setting up your workflows and getting your engagement increased and focusing on one goal at a time and improving that goal and looking through your workflows and funnels. Like I said, I will give you my 50% off code if you wanna try it out. Chatbots is number two. At the bare minimum, I would say at least get a couple of those FAQs and then have a way for those new clients to set up an appointment and make it easy for them. The third thing, Google Analytics. I know, again, that can be really tricky. It can be complicated. But again, you can create reports in there and see a summary of everything that you're needing and conversion rates, bounce rates, and your session duration and keywords. Those are probably the top four things that I would focus on when you're actually using Google Analytics. It's a great way to see how your website is doing, but more importantly, it's a great way to see who is being drawn to your website from where. And then the three sources for your open source models would be ChatGPT, Bard, and Llama2. Also, I would say ChatGPT was trained to on text from the internet. And Google Bard was trained on a specific data set for conversions. This leads to argue that ChatGPT is better at producing paragraphs and summaries and other text-based processing tasks 
while Google Bard is better at conversations. So depending on how you're wanting to use these, I would say go back and forth between the two because you can still utilize the free service until you fall in love and decide that you actually wanna pay for it. Regardless, I am here for you each step of the way here at Successful Stylist Academy Podcast, and I appreciate you all so much for your listening, eager ears to grow your business, and I wanna encourage you to dream big, set goals, take action, and I look forward to chatting with you next week. Thank you.